I love my mom because she takes care of me and my sister and she makes food for us. Okay, why do you love mama? Because she loves me. I love mommy because she reads to me. I love mommy because she cooks for me. I love mommy because she gives me ice cream. Why do you love mommy? Because I love you, mama. <laughs> I love my mom because she helps me make my food. Um, she helps with schoolwork and she helps keep me on task. I love that my mommy is a selfless servant. Why do you love mama? Because mommy is beautiful. Why do you love your mom? Because she cooks for me and She cooks for me and plays with me. I love my mom because she takes care of me. Um, the best thing about my mom is that she works hard to provide for my brother and me. What do you love about your mom? Um, because that she she's like she's like really really good at at, at cooking like bread, like baking bread, and also the second thing about her is, is that she, she really does, she, she really makes the best lunch, lunches and dinners, and, and also she, she's been super kind to let us let us sometimes watch um watch Mrs. Rogers during lunch, so that's really nice of her. And and also sometimes she let us watch his movies after dinner and sometimes like that. Why do you love your mom? Because I think that she takes care of me very well and she doesn't give me negative feedback like my dad. And also, she is maybe the person who cares about me the most aside from Dad, Grayson, and Griffin. Okay. What's your name? Samuel. Samuel, why do you love your mom? Because no matter what, she'll always, she always provides for me. She always cares for me. She, she gives me what I, she gives me what I need and she, and she, and she loves me. Mama beautiful. I love my mom because she cares for me, she gives me the food I need, and gives me lots of lots of things. And she helps share God's love for us, and she is the best mom ever. The best thing about my mom is for her personality. She's really happy and nice. Yeah, and what's the best thing about mom? Because she's kind. What is the best thing about your mom? Um, she plays with me. Mom, uh, I love you because you resemble all the Hogwarts houses because you're nice and kind and caring like a Hufflepuff. You're smart and clever like a Ravenclaw, ambitious and resourceful like a Slytherin, and brave and courageous like a Gryffindor. So, I love you. Hey, I am Mama. Yeah. Great, and what is the best thing about Mom? Mama cooks every meal that we eat. Yeah. Great. What's the best thing about your mom? That she that she's always that she always cares for me. She she and she always does what's best for me, no matter what. Great. What's the best thing about your mom? The best thing about my mom is she gives us things that we need and she makes food for us. 
What is the best thing about your mom? I think the best thing about my mom is that she's ready to discipline us. <laughs> for us to do what's right. How does your mom help you love Jesus? We go to church. By either reading the Bible, my purple Bible, or or either like I ask the questions about the Bible and about Jesus, then 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 she um then then she like tells me tells me the answers in that that she knows or or either she turns on church church on the tv like like like, like he did this morning or or like or like sometimes she prays she prays with me sometimes yeah how does mom help you love jesus my mom comes to love Jesus because she takes me to church PBS and church time to learn about God. And how does she help you love Jesus? By reading the Bible. My mom helps me to love Jesus because I know that she prays for me every day and I see her serve like Jesus. How does mommy help you love Jesus? Because Does she read you stories about Jesus? Yeah. And take you to church? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Okay, say so goodbye. Bye. Wait, you're not even looking. You're hiding your eyes. Say goodbye. Goodbye. And Joe, what else? Um, she reads us the Bible. She reads the Bible. Or she puts on church. And we watch it. And, mm-hmm. and what else? And do we eat dinner? And do we pray? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, and that's. And how does she help you love Jesus? She reads the Bible and teaches us about the gospel. Um, my mom helps me love Jesus by volunteering for Operation Christmas Child and teaching me to spread the gospel. How does your mom help you love Jesus? Um, she sets a great example. She reads the Bible a lot, tells us to read the Bible, and she reads it before me and my brothers go to sleep. Cool, thank you. My mom helps me love Jesus by always pointing me back to scripture as truth. How does your mom help you love Jesus? She guides. She guides me through. If I do, if she guides me through difficult, difficult situations. She, she, by praying, by praying for me, she, she keep. She she disciplines me if I if I do something wrong, and she and she always tells me what's right. I is Jesus in my side, protecting me, listening to my 爱是我做蛋炒饭给妈妈吃。母亲节快乐！爱就是有耶稣在我旁边，保守我，听我的祷告。爱是我做蛋炒饭给妈妈吃。母亲节快乐！爱就是有耶稣在我旁边，保守我，My mom's had a huge impact on my heart. 
She taught me to love wisdom and humility. She's had a huge impact on my imagination. She taught me to love Narnia and Lord of the Rings. But most importantly, she's had a huge impact on my faith. She taught me to love Jesus. So, thank you, Mommy. I love you. And happy Mother's Day. It's been said that most mamas ought to qualify for sainthood, and that couldn't be a truer statement. The way moms love their children and make tremendous sacrifices for their families is such a great reflection of Christ. Moms, we love you. We thank you for every time that you bandaged us up and all the times that we fell, whether that was physically or metaphorically. Um, for every time that you stood up for us when no one else would, and for all those moments that you gave us pep talks and instructions where you probably had to repeat yourself five or five thousand times, and for all those moments in between. Moms, we see you, we're grateful for you, and we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers out there. You guys are all such a great reflection of God's goodness in our lives and the way that you care and love us constantly. Uh, to my own mother, I love you. Um, I'm thankful to God for you. I look forward to seeing and celebrating with you later. I'm thankful for my mom for a lot of things. Um, just most importantly for being someone who's always uh, pointing me towards God and who has encouraged me just to um, to love Him and to, to seek after Him. And yeah, I'm just so thankful for her and all the self-sacrifice that she's done for me and, and for the millions of things that she's done for me that I'll never even know about. So thanks, Mom. I love you. And happy Mother's Day. Um, to all the moms watching this, I just wanted to say thank you for being amazing reflections of Christ to your children. Um, I know that in my own life, my mom is one of the greatest examples of love and sacrifice when it comes to me and my brother. Um, I just want to encourage you to continue to reflect Christ's love to your children because for many of them, um, their first tangible example of Christ's love comes from you. Um, God is using you to um, point your children to Him, and I pray that you will continue to be faithful um, in just giving your children tastes of God's goodness and grace. Um, while it may not be easy, and oftentimes it is hard, uh, remember that you can be a good mother because of Christ and because of the grace and forgiveness you have been given first and foremost. So we love you, um, we're, we thank you, and we're praying for you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mama. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. <laughs> we, we love, love you. you! We love you! I love you, Mama! You're the best! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Hello church family, uh, today we'll spend some time in worship, uh, we'll be saying Heart of Worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Long just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required you search much deeper within 
through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words. No one could express how much you deserve. No one we can pour. All I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. The Unbelievable Special Promise from Genesis chapter 17, 18, and 21. God had taken Abram and Sarai on a journey and shown them a beautiful land that would be their families one day. Abram and Sarai were confused because they were so old way too old to have babies, but they loved God and they believed him. But as year after year went by and they still didn't have a child, they started thinking that maybe they didn't understand what God had said. Because now Abram was 99 years old and Sarai was 90 years old, and they still didn't have a baby. Then God spoke to Abram with words that were full of love and assurance. He told Abram that he was making a special promise with him a promise that is called a covenant. A covenant is a promise that lasts forever and that is filled with love and can never ever be broken. God told Abram that his covenant with him was that all of God's people from then on were going to come from Abram and Sarai. He told him that kings would come from them, but that most important of all, God's people would come from Abram. The covenant meant that God would love everyone on earth, but that he would have a special people to be his. This people would someday have soft hearts that could love, hear, and obey God 
the way Adam and Eve did in the garden before they listened to the snake and disobeyed God. God told Abram that as a sign of this promise, Abram and Sarai would get new names, Abraham and Sarah. And that soon God was going to give them a son and they should name him Isaac. Well, this all sounds like pretty amazing news, right? It was, except Abraham was super, extremely, unbelievably old, remember? And God had been talking about giving Abraham a son for a long time. It just seemed a little bit unbelievable. So Abraham fell on the ground and laughed. Ho, 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 ho. Seriously. The Bible says that he fell on the ground and laughed. Abraham told a friend that he needed to find Sarah and give her God's message that she was going to have a son. Well, Sarah was behind the tent door listening and heard what Abraham said. And you know what? She did exactly what Abraham did. She laughed too. <laughs> God told Abraham that Sarah had heard and had laughed, but God wasn't laughing. God was serious. He reminded Abraham that nothing is impossible with God. And God was right because just as he said a little while later, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth to a son who they named Isaac, just as God had told them. It seemed crazy, silly even, for someone as old as Sarah to have a baby. But God had told Abraham that was the plan. One thing we always see is that God does what he says he will do. So just like he said, Isaac was born, and when he was, his mommy and daddy weren't laughing. Instead, they were filled with love and joy because they realized God always keeps his promises, even when they seem impossible. I bet that your mommy and daddy were filled with love and joy that you were born too. The end. Wow, wasn't that great? Now we have some questions for you and Hippo's here to join us. Okay, are you ready for your questions? The first question is, what was the special kind of promise called that God made with Abram? Hmm. I think it's called a covenant. That's right, Hippo. Very good. The next question is, if God was going to make a covenant with you, what would you want it to be? Hmm. You can think about that one. The next question is, what did Abraham and Sarah do when they heard God was going to give Sarah a baby at her old age? Laugh. That is right. And the last question is, what did God remind Abraham of after he and Sarah laughed at the news. Hmm. God reminded Abraham that nothing is impossible for him. That's very good, Hippo. Great job, boys and girls. Thank you for watching.
Welcome to Memory Verse! Yay! Yay. <laughs> Today we have a memory verse that relates to our Bible story. So first of all, we're going to say it together. Hope you can read! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Okay, here we go. Let's read Ready? it together. One, two, three. By, By faith, faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called. Hebrews 11, 8. Very good. Did you watch the hand motions? Because we're going to do it one more time. Ready, set, go. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called. Hebrews 11, 8. Very good. What does this verse mean, Daniel? Mm, <laughs> what does faith mean? What does faith mean? Does anybody know? Isn't it when you like believe something that you might not be able to see? That takes faith. I think so. Mm -hmm. what do you Good think answer. Yeah. Yeah. Please. So by faith, Abraham, Abraham was the one who had faith in our Bible story. He obeyed. What does obey mean, David? Obeyed, huh? Has your have, have your parents ever asked you to do something? Oh, like a chore? Definitely. And then what do you do? You follow it. You obey. So because you love them, you do what they want you to do. That's a good description. So, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called. Called? What does that mean, Sarah? Oscar! Oscar, oh. over here, look! Oh look, Daniel's calling Oscar! Oscar, come to me! <laughs> Oscar. Oscar doesn't obey. Oh, he has no faith. <laughs> but Abraham obeyed when he was called. Who do you think he was called by? Hmm. His mom? No, I don't think so. Probably not his mom. No. I think it was God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah. the story. Yeah. Yeah. The story. You guys remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this verse reminds us that Abraham had faith and he obeyed God when he called. And we find this in the book of Hebrews in the Bible, chapter 11, verse 8. So thanks for joining us. Let's read it one more time. Oh yeah. I want to do the motions. One, two, three. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called. Hebrews 11, 8. Thanks for joining us. Hey guys, so this is the craft that we're going to be making today. It's um, a tent with baby Isaac, Sarah, and Abraham. And so um, this craft is on page 23 in the link on the link below. And so what you're going to need is crayons, scissors, glue, and you're also going to need two colored paper for the tent. I chose brown, but you guys can choose whatever color you like. And what you're also going to need is to print the um, two pieces of paper of the layout of Abraham and Sarah and also the tent and that is on page 24 and 25 of the link below. So first you guys want to grab your two colored sheets of paper and then this um, tent paper that you guys printed out. Lay this on top of the two colored sheet of paper so you have like three papers in total and then you want to grab a pair of scissors and you see this outline of this tent over here Cut that outline on top of these two sheets of paper. Okay, so now that you have two sides of the tent, you want to get one of them. And what you're gonna do is that you're gonna get this paper and then you're gonna put it on top of only like one side of your tent. And then you see this vertical line? What you wanna do is that you wanna cut all the way here. But don't go all the way to the top. Stop where the line stops over here. Okay, so after cutting the slit, it should look like this. So this is going to be the front side of your tent. So what you're going to do after that is you're going to glue these two sides of the tent together. So keep in mind that when you glue them, you're only gluing the side of the tent. You don't want to glue the entire piece. So I drew a line so that you guys can understand. So you want the glue to be from like um, the edge of the tent from over here. So you want the glue like here and then you just glue them on over here. That way, when we make the entrance for the tent, you guys can like fold it and it would be fine. 
Okay, so after gluing these two sides of the tent, it should look something like this. And what you're gonna do is that you're going to fold these two sides. So where you made the slit right here, you're just gonna fold these two sides. And if you glued it correctly, you guys should be able to fold it. Okay, so after folding it, it should look like this. And so now your tent is complete. So what you wanna do next is that you wanna get this sheet of paper that you guys printed out. And this has Abraham, Sarah, and baby Isaac. You're gonna wanna color them and then you guys can cut them out. Okay, so this is what they look like after I color them. You don't need to follow this. Um, you can just color it however you want, but this is what I did. And you just need to glue baby Isaac to um, their hands. And then the last step is to just to glue them inside the tent, so right here. Okay guys, this is the craft, we finished it. Um, mine looks a little bit boring, but you guys can color it, add stickers, decorate it, however you guys want. Um, I taped the memory verse on the back, and it just says, The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. Genesis 21, 1. So this craft just um, is like a representation of what God had done to um, Sarah and Abraham. Even though um, it seemed doubtful that they were going to have a son um, because of their age, despite all these doubts and uncertainties, God still fulfilled his promise. So this is just a reminder for you that, you know, um, regardless of the situation, no matter how impossible it seems, whatever God promises, he will fulfill. So yeah, that's it. Every tribe and every tongue 